Hi, my name is Matthew. I'm an application engineer here at Hawkred Systems. Queryform brand scanners are known for their high level of accuracy and resolution. With a combination of their laser and target system, the scanners have a wide range of use and can scan just about any type of object depending on the type of Queryform scanner used. Target-based scanning systems use reflective targets to maintain tracking along an object or surface, making it so it's nearly impossible to lose tracking while scanning. In this video, I'll go over the general workflow of using VX Elements, Queryform scanning software and processing scan data. For starters, I have VX Element open and I'm going to verify I have the proper scanner activated. VX Elements is a single launcher for all of Creaform's various softwares such as VX Model, VX Inspect, and VX Scan. If we go into Change or Add Product window, we can add new software or scanners to our account or toggle between which scanner we will use. For this video, I'm making sure that the Handy Scan Elite Black is activated since that is the scanner I have plugged in. Next, I'll recalibrate the scanner to ensure that the highest quality of data is measured. This is recommended to be done once a week if the scanner is used often, or upon reuse if it sat for some time. This is a very quick process. We simply place our calibration plate on a flat surface and position the scanner as seen on the screen. Different scanners may have different methods of viewing the targets, as in different angles to hold the scanner, but the overall process is the same regarding matching the scanner to what is seen on the screen. Once the scanner has been recalibrated, we can start a new scan by clicking the next arrow. If you are new to using the scanner, there are guided workflows which can help walk through the scanning and processing. The software will change to show we have a VX scan modular activated now with a default scan. We have a few options we can change now such as the resolution of the scan, the target size used, or shutter speed of the scanner. All of this however can be adjusted later and will likely be changing the shutter speed a lot while scanning, so for now I'm keeping them at default. The object I'm using is a matte part with targets on various spots of it. Clicking the Scan button activates the currently selected scan and hitting the Start button on the Handy Scan begins capturing data. As long as I have four or five targets in view of the scanner, it will maintain tracking and capturing data. I can even rotate the part around and maintain tracking because all the targets are on the part. It's important to note that if the targets on the part move, we may have trouble maintaining tracking since the system is looking for specific locations after seeing a target once. We can always add new targets to the part to help tracking, but it's not recommended to remove any. If we have targets on the table and on the part, we won't be able to rotate the part due to a discrepancy in the target system. The shutter speed slider affects how the camera of the scanner sees the material being scanned. Some materials such as this white plastic came in fine at the default settings, but if we increase the slider, we could begin seeing the certain crevices of this part. Shiny parts tend to be needing a lower shutter speed setting between maybe 0.5 and 1.5, while matte material can go all the way up to 3 to 4 shutter speed. Once we finish one scan, we can create a new one by clicking New Scan on the top ribbon. Since we'll be scanning the underside of this part, our previous targets won't carry over, so I'm going to click No on copying the targets. I can also adjust the resolution of the scan by using the sliding bar. Just because I'm changing the resolution now doesn't mean their previous scan isn't usable. The Creaform scanners are actually capturing at the highest level of detail at all time. It only displays the resolution set on the scan parameter. Because of this, we can adjust the resolution whenever we want, before or after a scan. So long as enough data is captured in the scan process, we can change an existing scan from 1mm down to even 0.3mm. I'm going to repeat a lot of the process with this new scan capturing large swaths of data with the grid pattern, changing the shutter speed as I see fit. We also have the ability to zoom in and adjust the frequency with our control buttons on the scanner itself. Additionally, if we double click the scan button, we can switch between the grid pattern to a single line laser, which significantly helps capturing into crevices and pockets of parts due to the change in the cameras being used of capturing. With a top and bottom scan done, I just need a third scan to align everything together. Since my part has plenty of stickers around it, I can actually just hold the part in my hand and rotate around. This takes a bit of hand-eye coordination, but allows you to quickly capture two sides of a part. I am just slowly rotating around to ensure I capture targets on both sides before I start moving around faster. To show off how easily we can regain tracking due to the targets, I can also take the part away from the scanner, rotate it completely around, and once brought back into view, the scanner automatically knows what area it's looking at due to the targets. With our scans done, we can begin editing and processing the data. The first thing I want to do is remove any excess data not associated to the part. On the top left of our workspace, we have a couple of different methods of selecting data. For example, the lasso tool plus selecting through can be used to target large areas of data. 
If we enable target selection as well, we can add targets within the area to be deleted too. For the table, I can use the cutoff plane tool to select a few points and make a cutting plane. Anything below this plane, data or targets, can be deleted. Be sure not to select anything you don't want to delete since it completely removes it from the scan data. Another handy selection method is outlier. This will select all data besides the largest mesh. The slider just what percent will be selected. There is a tool within the scan parameters to automatically highlight outliers as well, which we can save some time with. Once our data has been cleaned up, we can begin aligning and merging everything together. In the Merge Scans tab, the scan we are currently selecting becomes the registered or locked scan, while the others can be selected one at a time. We have three methods of aligning, targets, surfaces, and global registration. Target alignment is the most accurate for alignments. It uses the targets of our scans to align together. For this part, it's perfect. Since we have plenty of targets around the object, clicking Align automatically snaps the two scans into place and gives us a bleeding effect, indicating that they are well imposed on one another. To top it off, we can even run a global registration to ensure everything is well aligned to one another. With the scans aligned at this point, I'm going to save the alignment by clicking Align on the bottom. This locks the scans in their current alignment in case I need to add extra scans or reprocess the data. Going back into the Merge Scans tool, we can adjust the resolution of what our Merge Scan will be, as well as whether or not we want to keep our old scans, which we almost always do, and hit Merge to combine everything together. After a short delay, a new scan will appear in our list that is made from all of our existing ones. If the resolution has been increased, it will use data from all of the scans, which is handy if one scan may be lacking in certain data at a spot, or was scanned at a lower resolution. We're close to finishing our scan now, at this point, we've cleaned, aligned, and now we just have to finalize our mesh. Currently, we have targets all over our part, which we don't want to carry over onto the mesh. We also have bits of floating data still remaining. At the bottom left, we have our finalized parameters, which will clean up the remaining targets and outliers. We can adjust the parameters as well if we want to fill in any potential holes of the mesh, have sharper edges, or an overall smoothing. Once we hit finalize at the top, it will run these parameters and output our final mesh. Looking at the mesh, it's pretty good at 0.5 millimeters. We can see that there are some bumps in areas where targets were. This is caused by having targets too close to an edge or on a curved surface. It's recommended to keep targets about an inch away from an edge to ensure this doesn't happen. While I could just adjust the resolution of the mesh, I'm going to make a new mesh via the Merge Scan tool and process it at 0.3 millimeters. Once processed, we can see how the bulk of the mesh looks the same, but text come out because of this new high resolution. I'm going to scan another part that is too small to place targets on. Additionally, it's very shiny, so I'll need to adjust that shutter speed and toggle between the single line and grid pattern frequently while scanning. Before I begin capturing the object, however, I'm going to do a preemptive scan of the target's placements. This helps with making sure that the data coming in is accurate for small parts, since the scanner isn't looking for both targets and object data at the same time. To do this, I simply need to switch the scanner mode from surface to positional targets. Now when I scan, only the targets appear. Once I capture all of the targets, I can place my object on the board and capture the surface data. When I create a new scan, I will choose to duplicate the target positions since they won't be changing between the different scans. If I accidentally move one of these angle irons that has targets on them, I'll need to rescan the positions, only to reassign the target positions on the new scans. I won't need to worry about the previous scans themselves. Since I duplicated the targets in my new scans, all of our scans sit in a single space. I'll clean the data up again so only the part remains. In the Scan tab, I can't use the target-based alignment since we have nothing on the part. Instead, I can use the surface alignment. There is an auto option, but it tends not to work unless there is a large amount of mesh data on all sides already registered. I'll choose the manual option to pick a similar point on two different scans and align based off of that. After getting two scans aligned, I can start using the auto option to match the rest, and I'll finish it off with a global registration. At this point, I simply need to merge everything together and finalize the scans. I'll use similar settings in our previous object and output a mesh at 0.3 millimeters. Despite the surface being extremely polished and shiny, the mesh comes out very clean. For this part, I'm also going to align it with NVX elements, so that way when the mesh is exported, it's already aligned to a global origin. In the top ribbon, we have a few options to insert primitives such as planes or lines. With flood selection enabled, I can select on the surface or multiple points 
To create a fitting plane, after inserting three planes on the part, I can reuse these planes to fit in a line or two at intersecting points, or even a point based on where that line intersects with another part of the planes. In the Align tab, there's a couple different ways to align, and I'm going to choose Plane Line Point options, so we can assign these primitives to an axis constraint. Similar to a datum alignment, we can use these primitives to make a perfect alignment, as seen in our workspace. At this point, we can export the mesh and begin reverse engineering or inspecting. Targets may be tedious to put on at times, but it really does help to ensure that the data comes out highly accurate and can speed up processes later on with our alignments. Because this uses lasers and targets, we can even scan very thin objects and they come out perfectly. I hope you find this video helpful. Please subscribe to our channel or blogs for more information on scanners or engineering softwares.